안녕하세요. 안녕하세요. 니하오, 고니치와. あのよくその発表するときにはよく日本語でやってるんですけど申し訳ない今日は英語でやってみたいと思いますがよろしくお願いいたします So hello everyone My name oh, oh, you too. Hello <laughs> My name is Eric Charles Hawkinson Please call me Eric I'm from the United States I grew up in a state called Arizona but I've been living in the northern part of Kyoto Prefecture for the last 10 years in a rural area. And uh, it's there where I work now at a university called Seibu University, teaching a variety of subjects, mostly English, but uh, we do a lot with rural tourism there as uh, part of our Institute for New Tourism division, which they recruited me into a few years ago. So today we've been talking about intercultural communication, a lot of good stuff like that. And my, one of my goals today is to use some of these new technologies that are emerging to help us uh, get our ideas out, collaborate a little bit more, and uh, especially get some information out, especially from rural areas, for tourism in Northeast Asia. So today's agenda, what I'd like to go over today, I'm just talk a little bit briefly about my background, and I'll talk a little bit about a project I've been doing recently uh, researching these new technologies, internet-based technologies, to get information about rural areas out to international tourists. And I'll talk a little about some of the results from my recent research and how I'm using that to kind of get the word out and how to use some of these new technologies to better promote your rural tourism attraction. So yeah, that's me. I have a background, my working background is in IT. I worked for a Microsoft outsourcer for many years. I was a troubleshooter for a lot of Microsoft products. Um, this was uh, about 10 years ago, probably more. And I also have a work history in travel. For a couple years I worked for America West Airlines in their international division that was based at the airport, international airport in Phoenix, Arizona. But uh, about 10 years ago, I moved to Japan and became a teacher. And now my main emphasis is on educational technology, which basically means I'm looking for ways to use the internet, mobile phones, internet technology to better educate students. And what I've done recently is I'm taking that, some of that uh, stuff I've been doing to help teach students using these technologies and help promote the rural areas that I've become to love in uh, northern Kyoto in Japan. So this is a project I've been working on for the past couple years. I started it in 2011. It's called Forever Kyoto. And this project uh, I started because I've been developing websites for many years. And uh, I found it was hard to find information, especially in English, about some of my favorite attractions in rural Kyoto. I'm not talking about the city. The city of Kyoto has plenty of information in multiple languages. But the city is not just a city, it's also a prefecture with a lot of uh, countryside beautiful areas and lots of good things to see. So what I've done with this project is I've tried to use a lot of these technologies and my uh, web development skills to put out the information about the rural area specifically to international guests. Oh, sorry about that. So this project has a bunch of objectives, a couple of which I've already stated. Uh, one of them is to promote Japan to international travelers. I'll show some of the uh, kinds of travelers I'm pro trying to promote to in a minute. But I'm also using it to conduct research on best practices on how to put information onto the internet to appeal to foreign tourists. And what I do is I take some of that data because you can get some lot of good useful information and data from people that use these services to find your products and attractions and give those back to the local business owners and uh, 
tourism officials to better change their products and attractions to better appeal to the same guests that they're trying to appeal to on the internet. So what I've been doing with this project so far, I've been doing a lot of uh, talks mainly around northern Kyoto, Japan, uh, mainly to municipalities, uh, tourism boards, uh, some NPOs, been uh, trying to educate people on better ways, better practices on using the internet to promote their uh, attractions or events, especially in rural areas and to international travelers. I've been doing some consulting with some of the same groups, especially um, the upper cities where I live, next to, close to my university. And I've been conducting a lot of uh, cultural awareness seminars just to get people in the same room and uh, talking and exchanging and therefore push that kind of uh, atmosphere and feeling onto the net to uh, practice these uh, internet marketing. This is the area of research I've been doing lately. Has anyone ever heard of this? Can anyone guess what this might mean? The E is probably easy. Everyone has email, right? So the WAM is a very famous English phrase called word of mouth. Word of mouth in Japanese, kuchikomi. Sorry, I don't know that in any other languages. So it's basically rumors and information spread through people to people, just like we spread rumors, but it's on the internet. And how this information is processed and spread from one person to another, and specifically I'm very interested in how this information is processed and spread from one language or one culture to another. So this is my basic research model trying to find these uh, word of mouth, uh, rivers, kind of like so how I like to think of it, flow of information. So you talk about the promoter, this is a lot of you, you're promoting something, an event or an area or uh, something going on in your region. And then we have the traveler over here going to the internet or any other medium uh, technology-wise to try and find information about the area or something to do or something to buy. And it all gets mixed around in the middle in, with the EWAM because as soon as it gets first seen by some person, some medium, some person sees it, passes it on to a friend, or reposts it, or talks about it in a different way on a video, or on a blog, or emails it to friends. So this whole idea of EWAM is very interesting to me, and I'm uh, doing a lot of research into that. And some people call this Travel 2.0. It's the, where the in internet went from just broadcasting information to a collaborative effort. And that's what this whole Travel 2.0 means. It's a collaborative effort. It's not just a one-way communication. Okay, this is a, where I'm living now. It's called Fukuchiyama. It's a fairly small city in the northern part of uh, Kyoto Prefecture. And this is a very popular ramen shop. And you can see as I scan through here, there's lots of people waiting to get inside. And no matter what culture you are, no matter what language you speak, you walk by and see this and you know that something's good inside. This is popular. Well, that's the image you may think, right? So I walked by this one day and I'm like, oh, that, that must be good. So I didn't go in this day, I just took a picture, but I went afterwards and this was some of the best ramen I've ever had. So this is traditional word of mouth type of communication. You see this, you understand, oh, this must be good. And you can tell your friends, oh, there was a big line in front of, this is called Tonkichi. Is it good? It's like, oh, man, that's great. And therefore, you got some communication going. But these days, with internet technologies, it looks a little bit different. And it look, might look something like this. This is a uh, tabelog. It's a popular Japanese restaurant review website. You go onto this website and you review your favorite restaurants and uh, comment about the taste and variety of the dishes and the quality of service. 
And this particular restaurant, same restaurant, Tonkichi, has received 70 comments, which is quite a lot. And uh, people who want to go, 114 people would like to go, and their overall rating is 3.5 out of 5. So what a lot of people see data here, I see the same exact thing happening. Oh, there's a lot of people interested in this. They're waiting in line. And on the internet, you can't go, oh, there's a lot of people interested in this. They're, co they're talking about it. They're commenting on it. They say they want to go on the internet. So how do you start measuring this kind of activity? Um, I came up with this model a while ago. So you're uh, promoting your business here, and you put some information out into some internet medium. It could be you send out a mass email, or you post pictures on a Facebook page, or you tweet out some information. And therefore, users take this information and rummage it around, send it to different people, and it comes out completely, sometimes in a completely different way. And therefore, the traveler sees that information not exactly as you put it in, but as it was processed by all the people that was, it was seen by and commented on on the internet. And we're learning that this is very important. People, when traveling, will trust other people's comments above of what you put yourself as information on a website. So let's say you're a restaurant owner and you put a bunch of beautiful pictures about the food on your website. If there is no comments from people that have been to your restaurant, it's less believable that it's good than seeing comments from an unbiased user. So I, I just took two countries and I compared them. I've also been comparing Korea and China as well. I have data on that. I can show you all that stuff. It's on my website. I'll post that at the end. So for example, we have different ways of using the internet here. Social networking, uh, blogs, microblogging, images and video sharing, things like that. Uh, travel planning sites is very, very uh, in, in the need for the travel industry, of course. And what I did is I compared to using Google rankings because you, if you want to convey your information from one region to another, they have to both be popular in both regions. For example, if you post a, a video to YouTube, that might not do so well in China because it's not able to be visible uh, in all places in China. And also it has to be highly ranked. It has to be highly visited in both countries. So what I did is I took the highest ranked most visited stuff in both the United States and Japan, and I mark those as the best places for Japanese promoters to put their information out to appeal to American tourists. But unfortunately, the landscape of using the internet for the United States, China, Korea, and other countries is quite different. So just like you have to localize your advertising for each country you have to localize your marketing strategy for internet stuff for each country. Use different mediums, as it were. So this is the overall research model that I've come up with. Uh, the travelers here coming to Japan could be any country, though. Repeat visitors prior to their first visit, they look at the internet quite differently than what they do when they're in Japan. So before you go, you'll, look, you'll, you'll use the internet quite differently than when you're actually there. And these are the different data sources that I've been using to see how promoters like you have been using the internet to get your information out. And then I've been seeing how that all flows from one to the other, using, looking at all these different mediums on the internet. So as an example of that today, hopefully if we have time, um, this is kind of a series I've been doing, a lot of different ideas, a lot of different mediums that I've been using that everyone can use to get out your idea in, uh, on the internet. And one is the panorama. And to do that, you need to have some ideas in mind. Some of the great things that help people pass along information on the internet come from these ideas, as that is interactive, it's informative, 
It's useful, it's enjoyable, and it's shareable. If you provide information or some sort of medium that provides all of these aspects, it's very likely that someone on the internet is going to take that information and share it with their friends. So taking all these in mind, I started a small project based on the larger one, which is the Panorama Exhibit. Has everyone here seen a panorama, of course? They they're go far back. This is one of the oldest ones from Europe, but they're actually older ones from uh, paintings of, from Northeast Asia, actually. Fortunately, I don't have pictures of those. It's basically a large shot where you can scroll back and forth. And this was a painting put up in, uh, this is a picture of London in the late 1800s, or sorry, 1700s. One of the most popular panoramic sites on the internet to view these, you can interact with 3D uh, environments, is called 360 Cities. And this is a map of Korea that I took just before coming. And each one of these small pictures here represents a panorama that someone has taken, made, and uploaded to this website. So someone interested in the landscape or what things might look like before coming to Korea can go to this site and interact with all these panoramas. But unfortunately, during my views, there was nothing uploaded from this area. <laughs> the closest one I found was just outside of Gumi. Uh, I can't show that to you now, but uh, this is something very simple that uh, if you start educating the other people, they can put this on sites like this, and it's a very powerful medium for people to get to know your area. Another quite popular one that uses this technology is Google. Uh, they're probably light years ahead of uh, other people using the same sort of technology. There's a street view, so you can actually navigate through these parks in Japan. This is a, uh, during the uh, cherry blossom blooming season in Kyoto. It's very beautiful. And uh, actually, there's a lot of this you can view these, these same things in Korea, too. So what I've taken as a subject for this panorama exhibit is Amano Hashidate. This is a nature park in northern Kyoto Prefecture. It's visited highly by uh, Northeast Asian tourists. It's a three-kilometer-long sandbar in Miyazu City. This is actually close to where I used to live. And what I've done is I've taken part of the, uh, uh, the landscape and created some of these interactive panoramas and put them on the internet to see what kind of users were interacting with them. But when I started to make it, uh, I used my instructional designer, my educational technologist type perspective so what I did is I created a set of learning goals that uh, could guide my, my uh, thinking as I went through creating this, this project. So I wanted to teach the uh, visitors about the local area, get them acclimated. And, but most of all, I wanted to get some feedback for the local business owners about how visitors felt, especially international visitors, felt about the, the area. How am I doing on, since they come with us, go. Five minutes, thank you. So this is called the Sky Deck Viewing Center viewpoint. This is just uh, an area, Sky Deck, where you can view this area. You can go out, look out. It's a beautiful landscape. You can see this area. And actually, you're supposed to turn around and look through it through your legs upside down. So what I did is I created a panorama exhibit that you can uh, view on any mobile device, an iPad, an iPhone, uh, any of the popular Samsung devices popular here in Korea. And I placed a QR code next to the exhibit. So foreign visitors, if they want to know what they're looking at, they can simply take the data from the QR code and their phone will now show them learning points of, of the area that they're looking at. Obviously, there's no information here, especially in English. 
And I've also placed this on an interactive map on the Forever Kyoto website. So these are the same learning points uh, that are visible from the area above, but also available on, the, on a website that you can view from a top-down satellite view. So this helps people coming to the area get acclimated to, uh, to navigate and uh, walk around the area. I might just do, if I have just a minute, I'm going to show you what that might look like if you were a visitor looking at the site. Just one moment. So this is my iPad. And I took about 300 images and pasted them all together. So as soon as you walk up to the area, you can just, it becomes like a window. And it's based on that language that you might be interested in. So if you wanted this in uh, if you're a Korean visitor, it'd be in Korean too, so you just look around, oh, there's something there. You can, I don't have internet access right now, but you can just click on that, and it'll give you information about what you're looking at. So here's the actual viewpoint right there. <laughs> now I'm facing the other way. <laughs> so you can click on some of these areas to find out more about them. And not only can you do this as a visitor to the site, you can, you can view this as a, a visitor to the website. So this is helping to connect people actually at the uh, location and people interested in going in the future, which is very important because you want that first, like I just told you earlier, you want that first-hand account of someone that's been there to help promote your area. So those were the same, site thing, same things I was showing you on the, inter, on the panorama. To make it, it's not very hard. And we can easily, thank you. to make it, it's not that hard. And we can easily start teaching uh, people in local areas, especially rural areas, about how to make these things to help foreign people get acclimated to the rural areas. You just have to basically start, stand in one area and take a, a mirage of pictures and stitch them all together. There's many programs available to do that. And you put that on the web using any type of uh, interface tool. I used what's something called Panel 2 VR. It's free. Basically, it took my panoramic image and made an HTML5 interactive layer on it. So that was what you saw. You can move around and things like that. And then I you might need a little bit of coding skills to edit that for specific mobile devices, but usually all you need is these two, and you can put that up on the web, and it's view be viewable by anyone. This is what I just showed you here. This is the actual QR code. This is how it would look on an iPhone and an iPad. I put this up on for a 30-day run, kind of like an alpha test, beta test, to see how it would be used and uh, let, let, it, let it be, and it was visited about 40 to 50 times in 30 days. And what I found is that the majority of the visits to the exhibit were from visitors from other countries or visitors that are, weren't actually phys physically there. And most people use the exhibit for less than three minutes. So that's all you need to convey. This is something that's also very good for intercultural communication because a picture says a thousand words. So you don't need to do a lot of translating, just a big picture and a couple of links to uh, already existing information on the web. So for the next steps of this project, this particular project, I'm going to be integrating this with other social media sources. You can get a lot of helpful data about how people share information by connecting uh, Facebook, Twitter, and other social networking sites to exhibits like this. You can take this actual panorama and put it into, uh, in Japan, especially at the train stations, we have some electronic kiosks. You can come up to them and touch screens and they'll tell you about the area. These panoramas, I'm actually working with the Amano Hashidate 
tourism board to integrate this panorama into their systems. You can, you can put these in all types of mobile applications. And you can uh, port them out to uh, other websites too, and even in ebooks, which I plan on integrating with in the future. So it's important when you're marketing on the internet to cross integrate your sources, not just on one thing. Not, you don't want to post just on uh, social media or just pictures or video. You want to be able to cross link them all together to create the most uh, user interaction between the, the potential guests and uh, the people using the data. These panoramas are getting more and more sophisticated and they're getting uh, more and more fun in my opinion. Uh, now that our phones know exactly where you are, you don't need to click on a QR code. Uh, you can put in a device as soon as you walk up to the area your phone will say, oh, we have a panorama here you can view. It'll tell you all about the area in your language. Would you like to see it? And this is art stuff already being uh, implemented in a lot of uh, tourist type situations today. Another thing is panoramic video. You can now take panoramic video and you can interact with it. This is a uh, vital portion of uh, helping users interact with things so they want to share it again. And we're going to be seeing more of this in the future. Right, um, that's the panoramic exhibit in a nutshell. This is my website, my Facebook, my Twitter, my YouTube channel. <laughs> I've been talking about social media. I do it probably too much. If you have any questions, you want to see my past research, you want to see my data, or if you just want to talk about what this stuff might do for your area, I'd be very interested to talk with you. And uh, thanks very much for listening. Thank you. <laughs> 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 저희가 1인분만 무료로 한 적이 있어요. 그래서 진영이 한 것처럼 이 일렉트, 일렉트로닉이죠. 전자 입소문이라는 거 이것이 이제 중요하고 요즘 뭐 이, 이 말씀하신 거 내용은 트래블 2.0 시대에 뭐 이런 나오는데 이 생산자하고 소비자가 서로 정보를 교류하면서 거기서 뭔가 마케팅 새로운 이, 이 생산성을 더 제고할 수 있는 이런 좋은 아이디어 제공해 주셨고 이 좋은 이 시청자 이 발표를 위해서 노트북, 아이패드 다 갖고 와 무겁게 갖고 오셨는데 우리 고맙다고 경례의 박수를 해주시고 <웃음> 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 <웃음>